I just got my new dev hoodie, so I'm officially a developer now and totally qualified to teach you everything in this episode. And in this episode, we are going to be building this lovely little animated effect that when we hover over the letters, it looks like the text is filling up. And we're going to be building it with just HTML and CSS, and we're going to start building it right now. Welcome back. We're going to start completely from scratch here. I have an empty index.html and we're going to build it straight from this. The first thing I'm going to do is add in some boilerplate and I'm going to leverage Emmet to do this by typing HTML colon five and it gives us our nice little boilerplate there. The next thing I know I'm going to need is a CSS file. So I'm going to link this in here and we'll create that file so I don't forget about it as well. So here we will create a new file called style.css and we'll go into that styling in just a minute. We're going to create a little container for the text or so we can actually center the entire text in the page just to make it look a little bit better. I'm going to create a container inside the body here so let's put in a div and give this a class of container. And inside this, we're going to give a h1. And we'll give this a class of text fill. Because we will be filling this text up eventually. And we'll say Kodu because since it's the channel name, we might as well get used to typing that you, we call this a fada in Ireland. That accent is called a fada. And you can get that you fada by saying on a British keyboard anyway, you and then four. So let's save this and jump into our style sheet now. I'm going to use Lato as the font here and just to save a little bit of time of going and googling and everything I have a tab open with Lato here and I'm going to just select the import rule just to make it quick. I'm using a weight of 700 just to make it thick so that it will look a little bit better or the same as I had in the intro. I'm just going to add that import at the top of the CSS file and we will add a body margin of zero just to get rid of any white space that Chrome often puts in when you start playing around with background colors and everything else. Let's create something, the container we, we said we're going to center everything in it. So I'm going to make a container class here that is going to be a height of 100 VH for the view height. We'll give it a display of flex. We're going to justify the content to center and also align the items to center as well because that way the item will be the items inside the container will be centered horizontally and vertically so it'll mean our h1 will appear directly in the middle of the screen we're going to also give this a nice background color it's probably pointless because of how close to white it is but you know the devil is in the details so we will say hash e e e for that nearly white background color. Let's look into the preview to make sure everything is showing up as we expected. Perfect. Now let's jump back and start styling this a little bit better. Let's jump into the fill text. And we are going to do something slightly strange, or it might feel a little bit strange to start, but we're actually going to create two backgrounds. We're going to create a gray background, which is the going to be the original color that we want for our font. And then we're going to create that gradient effect that's going to fill up that background. Because the whole way we're going to do this is we're actually going to use a background clip to cut out 
the shape of the text from our backgrounds to give it that lovely fill effect. If that doesn't make sense right now, don't worry too much. It will make a lot more sense when we get a little bit later into it. But a limitation we have when we're using colors on fonts is we can't really animate part of the font. By using the background clip text, we can actually use the background colors and make it look like we're doing that animated effect. So let's start styling up these blocks right now. And we'll give this a background color of 565656565656. We'll give a font family of, we'll go and copy paste this again. What is it? Font family of Lado. We'll give a font size of 10 VW, just to make it a little bit more responsive. We're going to text transform to uppercase, just to have that uppercase effect that I had in the intro. And this is always a better way for achieving these effects than using cap lock when you're typing. And let's save this so far and have a look at what we have. And it's not working. So let's have a quick look back. And I think it's because I said text fill, not fill text in the class. Let's just check. Yes, that's a little bit better. So now we have the large text as expected. Let's jump back into the styling and start getting our lovely gradient styled up. To add a second fill area or that filling effect, what I'm going to do is actually, rather than adding a second element to fill up, we're just going to use a pseudo class so or a pseudo selector. So we will say, and I was about to do the, the fill text again, so let's say text fill before And so this takes up some space. We have to give this a content. We will say empty for now. Let's add the linear gradient background. So we can do that by saying background. Linear gradient. And we are going to give this the two colors, the pink and blue that I've been using. So we'll say F107, 7BA for the pink, 155AF0 for the blue. They're the two X's I usually use in my colors. If you see any of my stuff on Twitter, you'll always see the pinks and blues. We are going to position this absolute. Position, no, absolute. And we will say top zero, bottom zero, and left and right zero as well. Let's jump back over. Okay, so let's give the text fill a relative container. And now it takes up just that. So I forgot to put in a relative position here. So when you use absolute, it is to your closest relative parent. And we wanted it to this. The next thing we're going to have to do is actually animate the growth of going from a width of zero to filling up the entire thing. So if we say a width of zero here, it should disappear. Yeah. And we actually want it to grow when we hover it. So we can say text fill, hover, not hover, and before, and we'll say the width 
is going to be 100% then. So let's just check back over if this works. Great. So let's actually just add in a little transition to make it so it doesn't just snap fill because that's the effect we're going for. So we can say transition all one second ease in out. Now we could just say transition with if you want to be more semantic. Now let's jump into the preview. And it fills up just as we expected, which is a nice effect now. The trick is now we want to basically carve out the letters so it gives that filling effect. Currently, our before element doesn't actually have any text in it, so we'll want to fix that as well. But we're going to do it in a little bit more of a scalable way. So let's jump into this. You'd see here, to get the text in it, we would say Kodu in here as well, and we could have the text. But the problem with that is if we change it in the index.html, we would have to change it here and change it in the CSS. So I think we're setting it up for a bug later on by doing it this way. So to make this a little bit more scalable, we're going to use a data attribute and we'll say data minus title. And we'll set that to be equal to Kodu. And then in our, our CSS, we can actually refer to that attribute by saying att or attribute data title. Save that and jump back. And we still have the text. Great. Now we will want to hide everything that's behind or outside of the text path. To do that, we will use the background clip. So let's jump up to the text fill first and clip the outside of that. And we'll say background clip text. Because this is a slightly more experimental feature, you'll need to make sure you have the web kit minus background clip as well so that it works on most browsers or all browsers. If you're using a CSS post-processing tool like PostCSS, this will all be handled for you. But if you're not, you'll have to just add in this. And what this does is it will hide or clip off everything that is outside of the text here. So if we jump back, you'll see that the background of the gray is gone. Now to get the color back, we want to say, the color is going to be transparent. So let's jump back over again. Nice. So it's now turned into that lovely gray background color that we had. We're going to do the exact same now for the before. And so we have color of transparent. We're going to background clip the text and then we're going to jump over. And wow, there you have it. The background clip of text gives us the illusion that we're filling up the color of the font itself, when really we're actually just filling up the background and showing it by clipping out the shape of the text. I hope you found this video helpful. I think this is a really cool trick that could make your site stand out. I'm going to use it for the title on my new personal blog and that's why I was playing around with this. If you found this video helpful, please hit that subscribe button and until next time, happy coding. <laughs>